Hello, my name is Dr. Mark Gwen, and I'm from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and I'm going to talk to you about abdominal ultrasound or sonography. Those two terms will be used interchangeably. First, let's talk about ultrasound in general. We use high-frequency sound waves to create the pictures. We do not use ionizing radiation. It creates images just like sonar does, and it can produce images of both solid organs and fluid-filled organs. What can be seen with ultrasound? Well, organs like the liver and kidney depicted in this image. The liver is shown as uh, the object on the top left of the screen, labeled A, and the right kidney as B. We can also see the bile duct, the gallbladder, pancreas, spleen, and abdominal aorta. In this image, the gallbladder is labeled B, and the bile duct is labeled A. We use ultrasound for a variety of reasons to investigate why a patient has abdominal pain or bloating, to investigate abnormal liver function tests, an enlarged abdominal organ, to detect stones in the gallbladder or kidney, or an aneurysm in the abdominal aorta. We can also use it as guidance for biopsy procedures. In this image, the liver is uh, depicted as the medium gray object in the center. This is a patient with cirrhosis of the liver, and the liver is abnormally bumpy and surrounded by fluid, the dark area to the left and bottom of the image. In this next picture, we can see a gallstone in the gallbladder depicted with the plus signs at either end of the gallstone. The gallstone is sitting in the gallbladder, the diagonally oriented black object. Preparation for the procedure is pretty straightforward. You wear comfortable clothing. You may be asked to wear a gown, and the preparation itself varies by facility and depends on the type of the ultrasound study. For studies involving the liver, gallbladder, spleen, pancreas, and aorta, you may be asked to forego eating anything for 8 to 12 hours before the procedure. For a study involving the kidneys, you may be asked to drink 4 to 6 glasses of water starting one hour before the exam, but contact your facility for specific instructions. An ultrasound machine looks sort of like a fancy computer with a keyboard and a screen uh, on a mobile cart with wheels. To create an ultrasound image, a transducer, which is shaped somewhat like a wand, is used to send and receive sound waves. Those sound waves travel into the body, bounce off an object, and travel back. Those images are created from the echoes from those sound waves. A Doppler ultrasound is a specialized type of ultrasound uh, where blood flow can be measured within blood vessels. In the two images at the bottom, uh, we see the liver in the bottom left with the vessels supplying the liver. In the bottom right, color has been added to those blood vessels by Doppler, showing that there is flow within those blood vessels. To perform an ultrasound, the patient is usually on his or her back, face up, a clear water-based gel is applied to the skin and the sonographer, the ultrasound technologist, or radiologist presses the transducer firmly against the skin in various locations. Pictures are taken, then interpreted by a radiologist, a medical doctor with specialized training in interpreting medical imaging studies. The benefits of ultrasound versus other imaging procedures are many. It is non-invasive, there are no needles involved, and it is painless. It's widely available, easy to use, and less expensive in many instances than other imaging procedures. There's no radiation involved, and we can produce clear pictures of soft tissues that do not show up well on x-rays. It provides live scanning, making it useful for guidance in biopsy procedures. There are no known risks. Unfortunately, ultrasound cannot penetrate or leap across air or gas, so we cannot image the hollow digestive tract, the stomach, small and large intestine, or image organs that are obscured by the hollow digestive tract. And in certain instances, large patients can be difficult to image. You can find out more from this website or from your radiologist. Thank you. Recorded February 2012. For more information and updates, please visit radiologyinfo.org.